Okay, hi everyone, welcome to this video. Before we get started, I'd like to thank Richard Denado, who is the architect at the company I work for, and he's the person who introduced me to UML, this technology that we're gonna be talking about in just a few seconds. So thank you, Richard, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, and besides that, for those who don't know me, my name is Rafael Deliu, I'm a software developer. I've been working professionally. Yeah, of course, working professionally. <laughs> Sorry about that, uh, for five years right now. And I live in Portugal. In this channel, I talk about technology. I talk about Portugal. I talk about lifestyle. At least I try to talk about these things. I don't do that frequently, but when I come here, I, I do. Right, so if you like this kind of content, uh, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also to click the like button down below. So documentation. I hope you're not afraid of this word. There are only a few developers I know who truly enjoy writing and designing this essential piece of every project. While the documentation might be loved by a few and frowned upon by others, all of you have suffered when onboarding a project you're not familiar with without proper documentation. I understand your developer is supposed to be writing code, to be pressing down all these keys in order to listen to that pleasing sound of your mechanical keyboard. Clicking, dragging, swiping, that's not really your thing. I don't want to spend hours playing of drawing diagrams with the most variety of tools available for that matter. More than that, even if you draw a diagram, you don't want to memorize the rules of UML, different types of shapes, arrows, lines, and your drawing is pretty understandable anyway, right? If you had done it in a napkin, while drinking a, a beer at your local bar, the result would probably be the same, wouldn't it? <laughs> All right, I don't like that either. I don't like drawing. I like documenting and I like writing. That's why I have a Medium page that you can check in the description down below. Although I love writing, I definitely don't like drawing. All right, and that's why I love playing UML. I love playing UML because it's fast, it's pleasing, and it's all I love doing but doing something different. I can draw my diagrams without swiping, dragging, scratching, or clicking. I can code and see results, and I can break it if I don't follow the proper syntax, which is lovely in my opinion. In a nutshell, plain UML is a component that allows you to write UML diagrams and other non-UML diagrams in a powerful and quick way. And you can check their documentation, which I'll leave the link to in the description of this video again. But first things first, what is UML? Most of you probably know what, what it is but I'm gonna give a short introduction to that anyway. So UML is a language intended to provide a standard way to visualize the design of a system. It was created to define a common modeling language for the architecture, design, and implementation of complex software systems, both structurally and behaviorally. So UML diagrams are categorized under two branches, structural and behavioral. Now I'm gonna show you an image. Have you seen a diagram like this before? This is a UML class diagram. But now imagine drawing a diagram like this, dragging, dropping all the shapes, resizing, copying and pasting, pulling arrows, rearranging them, rearranging everything because they don't fit in the canvas anymore. You know what I'm talking about, right? That's pretty boring. But forget about it. That's how you would draw this diagram using plain UML. Let's check it out. All right, so now I'm sharing my screen. And on the left side of the screen, you can actually see a draft for my Medium page. So yes, this is gonna be a medium article you're you're actually seeing this beforehand i haven't published it yet um i wanted to do it after i recorded this video and this is the diagram that i showed before in the video right and this is what we're actually going to be implementing with plain text on the right side of the screen right so let's see how we can actually do it okay so the first thing i'm going to be doing is i'm going to define that this is going to be a plan uml diagram right so okay let me refresh this all right nothing there because there's nothing defined here yet right so let's see what we can do so the first thing you can see is that we're going to implement this person interface on the left side right so to do it what i'm going to do is i'm going to write interface person right and then i'm going to do it like a block like this let's refresh to see what we actually get all right our interface is here Cool. And I'm going to do like plus name string, right? Then plus phone number. It's also a string plus email address, which is also a string, right? And finally, we're going to define our function, which is purchase parking pass, right? So 
purchase parking pass. Okay, and let's refresh this to see what we get. So now we actually have our interface with our attributes, name, phone number, email address, and the method purchase purchase per parking pass, right? And we can define the other inter the other classes now, right? So we have an address class, a student class, and a professor class. Let's define each one of them. So class address. I'm just gonna declare them like this first. So class student. Okay, and class professor. Nice. Okay, let's refresh this. And now we have our three classes alongside our person interface, right? So let's define the attributes for each of them. So basically we have street string, city string, state string, postal code, int, oops, forgot the plus sign, country, string, and our functions, validate, boolean, and output. Oh, this is my doc, right? Because he's outside, he wanted to be inside. All right. And string. Okay, let's see what we got now. All right, so our address class is defined. Let's define our other two classes, right? And for this matter, just copy and paste. So I already have it defined here. And I'm going to refresh it. All right. That looks pretty nice. So we have our three classes and our interface defined now, right? And what I'm going to do is, let me add a break line here. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to define the relations between our classes and interfaces as well. Okay, so the first relation we're going to create is the person with the address, right? So we're going to add an arrow. And let's see how it's going to look like. Okay, and it showed it down here now. So you can see that we create an arrow between them, an arrow between them, right? So let's add a comment on the left side. So zero to one person lives at an address. Let's refresh this again. Now you can see that we have zero to one. And on the other side of the arrow, we're gonna add one because it lives in one address, right? Let's refresh it again. Okay, we cannot see it here yet, but after we add the comment, which is lives at, we should probably see this now. Okay, so zero to one lives at one. And if we want, we can even make this arrow bigger by adding more dashes in it. All right, and let's see how it looks like now. Okay, so you can see that the arrow is longer now. So zero to one person lives at one address, right? And we can do something different here. We can also add, I, as long as I remember, it's like this. And I can actually give the direction of this arrow. Nice, so it lives at this address. Okay, but let's remove these two things. We don't need them right now if I have it like this. Okay, let's forget about this for a moment. And now let's do the relation between the student and professor, right? So the professor has an arrow pointing to the student. Let's refresh it now. Okay, so the arrow is created between them. And now let's add the comments on each side. So zero to many students are supervised by, oops, wrong side. So zero to many students are supervised by one to five professors, right? And the comment is supervises. Nice. Let's refresh this. 
that's what we get. So one to five professors supervises zero to many students. Okay, cool. And now let's create the relation among student, professor, and person, right? And for this one, what we're going to do is, okay, a student implements a person and a professor. So you can see that the empty arrow can be defined by the pipe for the greater than, right? So professor implements person. Okay. Now I got an error. Something's wrong. Okay. Wrong side. All right. Refresh this. And this is what we get. All right. This is not looking that nice still. We can we can try to play with the order, right? So if I get, for example, this and change to this. Okay, nothing changed. But I can actually make this, as I showed you before, to point to a certain direction, right? So let's do, let's try to do it like, like this. Oops, it's not top, it's up. All right, refresh. Okay, looks better. And leaves that it should be on the side, right? So what we're gonna try to do is, in the leaves that we're gonna put, we're gonna add the right here. So to point to the right, nice. Okay, so it's, it's looking very similar now, right? But it's still student is on the wrong side. But yeah, that's that shouldn't be a problem, I'd say, right? Perhaps we can change this by doing student and changing the direction of the arrow. Let's see if this works. Professor, let's see now. Okay, it worked, nice. Let's fix this thing here as well, so zero to many and one to five. All right, and let's see now. Okay, and now it looks, it looks perfect. Yes, it's almost the same, right? But we're still missing one thing here. And what is it? It's the colors, right? The style, right? So we have colors here. So you can define the style by adding a hash and then the properties. So for example, you can do back white, right? And now the background of this element is white. And then you can do so some column header and then pink. Okay, so it's basically the same color. Nice. And now we can do the same for the others as well, All right? But there's something else. The line is still a different color, right? It should also be pink. Let's try to do it like line pink. Okay, does it look similar? I think it does, but I prefer it black. So I'm gonna leave it nice. So now let, let's add the style to all the other classes. So this one should be light blue, nice. This one should be, I already knew the colors, right? So this one should be Bisqui. I think that's how I pronounce this. And the professor should be light yellow. Let's see how it looks like. Okay, it's looking very similar, right? It looks good, doesn't it? Yeah, and plain UML forces me to use the UML standards, right? Which is actually nice. I mean, you don't you don't have to follow it correctly. I could have used the, the wrong, um, conventions like all the, the professor and interface instead of an, a class or use the wrong errors or anything like that. But it's still you're forced to use elements that should exist in the UML diagram, right? Which is actually very nice. Besides that, it's easier to maintain. You don't need to drag and drop elements like you would have to in Dry.io, for example. In my opinion, it's 
kind of boring. I prefer to do that as text. And I think that most developers should like to do that as well. And besides that, if you have this document inside a Git repository, you can actually track the history of them. So if documentation changes within time, you can actually track all the changes that happened before in your Git repository as well. So give it a try, openplantext.com and start drawing your own diagrams using the syntax. Also open their documentation, which you can find at planningml.com. Right here you have all the diagrams that they have available. So sequence, use case, class, activity, component, state, object, um, and even other non-UML diagrams things like JSO, YAML network, and among others here that you can see. If you open them, you can actually check the documentation and see how they should be defined and play with this at plaintext.com. And I will be publishing my article to Medium. Okay, you can check it out. I'm leaving here some examples of diagrams that you can build. So this is the this is the one that we built together right now, the class diagram, right? But I also have here examples of a sequence diagram and a use case diagram and an activity diagram, right? And the state machine diagram and, and a few others. So please check it out. It's gonna be in the description of the video. Okay, so that's what I had for sharing today with you. I hope you have enjoyed this content. I hope you have enjoyed playing with me. I hope this will aggregate something good for you. And well, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to subscribe to my Medium page. Check the links in the description and see you around.